For meiosis, we're going to make six boxes. So when we look at um, two types of cell division, we have meiosis and we have mitosis. Now when we look at the purpose of each of these, they are different. Um, where meiosis's purpose is to make gametes. So you see right here you have, um, oh I don't know why it's not writing, but you have gametes are going to be made by meiosis, which are your sperm and your egg. And when they come together in fertilization, you now have um, like a zygote, a cell that is going to be what will now divide by mitosis for the rest of life. So once you have that zygote made, all of the cells made afterwards, with the exception of sperm and egg, are made by mitosis. So the two types of cell division um, kind of go hand in hand for life. So um, there are, like when we reference like life cycles, what we're talking about is the, like the meiosis and mitosis and how cells can either be haploid or diploid depending on what their purpose is. Um, so anyway, you can see here you have meiosis where meiosis is going to make a sperm and an egg that will come together in fertilization. Now this diploid is going to be um, uh, reproducing, like the cell reproduced by mitosis for the remainder of its life with the exception of the testicles and the ovaries where um, sperm and egg, our gametes, are made. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into meiosis now. So here we have our nucleus, and in our nucleus we have what's called chromatin. Chromatin is our DNA and our protein, so our linear chromosomes. And um, in reality, when I made this slide, I literally took um, and did like this, and I have 46 of those. So we literally have 46 linear chromosomes here. Um, however, when we talk about chromosomes, like really we kind of see them as this. So uh, here, this would be like a condensed chromosome, basically. So chromatin, um, and then here would be like our stereotypical chromosomes, how we think of them in our minds. Okay, so here's 46 chromosomes, but this is kind of messy when learning about meiosis and mitosis. So um, we're not going to work with all 46 of our chromosomes. All right, so here we go. When we start with our gametes, so in myto meiosis, Meiosis makes our sex cells, our sperm and our eggs, our gametes. Now, um, that's the whole purpose, is to make sperm and egg, reproductive cells. So our gametes are what we call haploid. Haploid is referencing the one set of chromosomes you find in the sperm and in the egg. So the gametes, the sperm has one set of chromosomes, the egg has one set of chromosomes. So when the sperm fertilizes the egg, now you have two sets. Uh, so fertilization occurs, and now we have a total of 46 chromosomes. This is now a diploid cell. This cell here has two sets of chromosomes, one from the mom and one from the dad. So you can see how haploid cells plus haploid cells, when they come together, make a diploid. Now this diploid cell will reproduce by mitosis to form other somatic cells. Um, okay, so uh, then mitosis and that's how you get like fully formed uh, adults or humans or organisms. So for the same thing you could have uh, gametes. Um, we also when we talk about haploid though, I know in that previous slide I used 23 to show the human uh, haploid number, but we reference it with n because like uh, how a dog I think earlier in that slide showed it had 78 chromosomes. So when you talk about haploid, we reference it with an N. So here this cell would be 2N uh, after fertilization. So here, um, like with the dog, the dog's uh, chromosome number, uh, here would be, you could write like 2N equals 78 for the dog. For humans, you would write like 2N equals 46. In humans, you have your, um, just our N, oops, in humans we would write like N equals 23. So just the N is referencing the haploid number and the 2N is, repre um, is referencing the diploid number of chromosomes that we find in the cells. So when we talked about mitosis last time, in mitosis all cells are 46 uh, with two sets of chromosomes. All gametes are N or haploid with one set of chromosomes. 
Okay, so there's your box one. Why do you find haploid? Where do you find haploid and diploid cells and why? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at uh, what we call a karyotype. Now, there's a common misconception that happens just from our lives of understanding and seeing pictures of DNA. So here I have chromosomes 1 through 22 plus an X chromosome. These would be like the chromosomes I find in an egg. Right here we'd look, oops, sorry, not a 2. This would just be N. N equals 23. 1 through 22 plus the, this right here is the X chromosome. So with this, um, when we have uh, the, these are haploid. So here I have one set. I have one of each kind of chromosome. Um, when the sperm fertilizes the egg, and now it brings a second set of chromosomes, here's the other half. So the sperm also has chromosomes 1 through 22 plus a sex chromosome. So this chromosome Y is called a sex chromosome. Um, so here is the big picture, and I think this is an area of confusion for some kids, is here's haploid. You have chromosomes 1 through 23 in a gamete. When the other gamete... Um, like when the sperm fertilizes the egg and it contributes the other half, here you have another 23 chromosomes. 23 plus 23 is 46. So with this, you have your um, like 46 chromosomes, your diploid number. Uh, so it's important though, when we look at these, this is not that X-shaped chromosome. These are two separate unduplicated chromosomes. You get one from the mom and one from the dad. Um, now with this, we call this picture here that you are looking at, like this whole thing, is called a karyotype. So here we see a karyotype of the chromosomes. Now when we see chromosomes though, and you have one from the mom and one from the dad, like these are both chromosome 14, we call those homologous chromosomes. <laughs> so when we look at um, like this picture here, are these duplicated or unduplicated chromosomes, right? So what we see here, these are, when we see this karyotype, these are not duplicated. These are all unduplicated chromosomes, but just with their pairs. One from the mom, one from the dad. You have two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, etc. Now if you looked at it, a duplicated karyotype, it would look like this. This is not the same as that. Okay. Sorry, just a little pet peeve of mine I want to emphasize. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about homologous chromosomes. So here I have a chromosome. Um, and on the chromosomes, these are, chromosomes are made of your DNA and your genes are located within your DNA. So on this chromosome, this one like linear strand of DNA, I have sections where I have genes located. So maybe on this, I have the gene for eye color for hair color and for height. How tall am I gonna be? What color eyes will I have? The information for those traits are on this chromosome. Well, I got one in the egg from my mom, but I also got one with the same information from my dad. And that would also have information about eye color, hair color, and height. Now, it might be different. One could say blue eyes, one could say brown eyes, but the fact is they're both eye color, both hair color, both referencing height. So we call these chromosomes homologous chromosomes. So homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that have genes or carry genes for the same traits. So each diploid organism has two copies of each chromosome, one from each parent, one from the mom, one from the dad. So they have a trait about eye color from the mom, a gene for eye color from the mom, and one from the dad. Now how they interact together to give you your actual eye color is in genetics, our next unit, but the fact is we carry them on the chromosomes. Okay, so homologous chromosomes is in your box number two. All right, so here comes meiosis. Now, when we look at our chromosomes, we're not working with 46. Instead, we're gonna work with just six. So here I have, um, and actually I'm gonna make them a little curved uh, because it makes my life easier when we get to more steps in meiosis. Um, so here I have six chromosomes. Now an interphase in G1, these are what the chromosomes look like, or really it'd probably be chromatin. Um, and so with this, 2n equals 6. The diploid number is 6. So at the end of meiosis, we should have um, gametes that have n equals 3, right? We're cutting these in half. We want to create haploid cells at the end of meiosis. 
Now, I have them color-coded because I wanted to show, like, these ones came from the dad, here's the match from the mom. But in reality, they're not color-coded in your, in your cells. They're just six chromosomes, okay? So, um, now we're going to go into S phase. If we pass that G1 checkpoint, in S phase, the DNA is going to duplicate. So now here I have the sister chromatids, and this is why that curve shape made my life easy. And so here I have um, sister chromatids have been duplicated in the beginning or in S phase. Then in G2, the cell pre prepares to divide. Now here we enter into M phase. So at this point, we have twice as much DNA, even though we're trying to get to haploid cells. So M phase for meiosis and making gametes is different than mitosis. Uh, so our first step, what's going to happen, is actually homologous chromosomes actually find each other. So homologous chromosomes are actually going to pair up. And that's why I make them color-coded, but I also added uh, little black lines. So these little lines right here are representing different genes. So I wanted to show you that they have similar genes on these chromosomes. They could find their pairs even if they were all in black and white. And so this combination right here we call a tetrad. So, I'm sorry, I think I have them go. So even if they weren't color-coded, they find their homologous pairs. So this tetrad here is made out of one, two, three, four cystic chromatids, and that's why it's called a tetrad, because tetrad means four. So in the very beginning of crossing over, you have, I'm sorry, in the very beginning of M phase, you have homologous chromosomes. They're going to find their, um, find each other and they're going to pair up. Now, a cool thing that happens here is they also do something that's called crossing over. So when a tetrad forms, the two sister, for, uh, sister chromatids form an association called a synapsis. So in reality, like these two sections would kind of be zippered together and really close. Um, and what happened, like this. So you have a synapsis of the two homologous chromosomes pairing up. And what happens when they're together is crossing over. The chromosomes are actually going to break apart and they're broken by proteins and they're going to be switched. So they're actually going to exchange pieces of their DNA. So now if I kind of like separate these two, I can see how this orange one now has a piece of the DNA from the blue chromosome and vice versa. So this here creates variation. This is one source of genetic variation in our chromosomes, that we have this genetic shuffling that occurs um, in meiosis. So we call this here, this would be considered a recombinant chromosome because it has DNA from two different uh, chromosomes. So in reality though, this crossing over isn't just a, like I have it here, just one area crossed over. But in reality, it's like an intertwining of these um, sister chromatids. And you can see it's only the sister chromatids that have formed a synapsis. The outside ones do not cross over. So here's like a scanning of two chromosomes. And you can see we have a couple new vocabulary words to add or one more. So here I have two homologous chromosomes. And where I have that actual X form is called the chiasm chiasmata. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's where the actual like breaking of that um, sister chromatid occurs and to be able to switch the DNA. So here you can see, um, let me go ahead and erase some of this. So here you can see the, um, the chiasma have been uh, highlighted for you in yellow. You can see all of the places where crossing over is going to occur. So it's more than just one time that uh, more than one location of crossing over. Okay, so um, I don't know what happened to box two, but if you could describe crossing over and include the word synapsis and chiasmata, and like what's the benefit of crossing over? What does it provide for the cell? Okay, I think we'll stop there to start the next uh, video.